Okay, next chapter. I'll try to make my little preamble spiel a little bit shorter. This is chapter 47, David, Shunned and Despised, from Psalm 69. From the book entitled, Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Dictated to me, commanded commands and directions to type this book for him as a proof that I am the righteous servant Moshe. He gave Moses three proofs, gave me three proofs. The most important is this book and another book he dictated to me, the life of God's righteous servant, to show how my life fits the verses of Isaiah 53, as opposed to, oh, let's say, Jesus, who <laughs> didn't fit the verses. Uh, again, the video on chapter 22, God's Righteous Servant Moshiach versus Jesus in 53. You should definitely read it if you're interested in the comments I just made. Just as he dictated the Torah to Moses, and Moses couldn't have known the information in the first five books of the Hebrew Bible of his own. He just couldn't. The Jewish people have derived 613 laws from those five books. Okay. And, and Moses, he was raised a prince in the house of Pharaoh until he killed a man. And then fled. <laughs> he, he, wasn't the, he wasn't of the highest character in those days. But at his death, he, it is said, in the Torah, he was the most humble man on earth. I know the reason why. It's in other videos. God's righteous servant. That would be me. God's righteous servant. No shit. Is despised and shunned by men, but ends up making the many righteous and receiving as his portion the many and the multitude as his spoil. That's those who come to believe in me. It's the people of the first six verses of Isaiah 53 combined in quotes. Psalm 69 reveals that like God's righteous servant, Moshiach of Isaiah 53, King David was shunned and despised before he became king, after his anointment by Samuel. This is from 1 Samuel verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 11. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the boys you have? He replied, They are still the youngest. He is tending the flock. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send someone to bring him, but we will not sit down to eat until he gets here. So they... No, I, I can't tell the difference. So they sent and brought him. He was ruddy, 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 cheat, bright-eyed, and handsome. Yeah, there's not many descriptions of any of the people in the Hebrew Bible. That, that's one of the, if not the only one. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord gripped David from that day on. Samuel then set out for Ramah. God is in his Spirit. That's not all that a lot of on David. The Spirit, God gripped him too. Man of divine being is right there with that anointment. Because the Spirit alighting upon you in uh, chapter 11, verse 1 of Isaiah, that's the anointment. The Spirit of lighting upon you. That's why he's the anointed one. Psalm 69. Verse 1. For the leader, O Shoshanim, of David. This is a psalm for David. Shoshanim. Again, Midrash form. Uh, break a verse down into parts, comment on each part. It's 
to the chief musician upon Shoshannon is a musical direction to the leader of the temple choir and most probably indicates the melody after or in the manner of authorized version upon <laughs> which the psalms were to be sung. As the words now stand, they signify lilies, a testimony. That's from Smith's Bible Dictionary. <laughs> Verse 2. Deliver me, O God, for the waters have reached my neck. Verse 3. No commentary. I am sinking. This is David. Or, yeah, this is as though David was saying it. I am sinking into the slimy deed and find no foothold. I have come to the watery depths. The flood sweeps me away. No commentary. Verse 4. I am weary with calling. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for God. He's with him. God's having him like this. <laughs> Verse 5. More numerous than the hairs of my head are those who hate me without reason. Many are those who would destroy me, my treacherous enemies. Must I restore what I have not stolen? Those who hate me without reason. Commentary. David was God's anointed of Jesse to be king of the Israelites. But to others, he was David the lowly shepherd who was said to be God's anointed king. God told Samuel, but his brothers couldn't hear it. And nobody believes it, including his brothers. Must I restore what I have not stolen? Commentary. Must David deny the anointment to be king of the Israelites that was freely given to him by God? Verse 6. God, you know my folly, my guilty deeds are not hidden from you. My guilty deeds. Commentary. Like God's righteous servant, Moshiach, David is a sin. Verse 7, let those who look to you, O Lord, God of hosts, not be disappointed on my account. Let those who seek you, O God of Israel, not be shamed because of me. No commentary. Verse 8, it is for your sake that I have been reviled. The shame covers my face. It's God's fault. He's shamed by it. I am a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my kin. In Psalm 110, David says, and we have a video on this. Indeed, I, this is the name of the video. <laughs> it's in the title. Indeed, I was born with iniquity, with sin. My mother conceived me. In the days of David, men had many wives and many concubines, as is, as is well known with his son Solomon. The iniquity came from his father Jesse, fathering a child with a woman outside the tribes. David's brothers were present at his anointment and passed over for the one born in iniquity. They witnessed the anointment but could not hear the words of Samuel. They witnessed the moment but could not hear the words that Samuel heard from God. They could not hear God tell Samuel, rise and anoint him, for he is the one. David became a stranger and an alien to his brothers and kin, as one born in iniquity and as one said to be anointed of God. If his brothers and kin believed he was the anointed of God to be king, they would have embraced him. Verse 10. 
My zeal for your house has been my undoing. The reproaches of those who revile you have fallen upon me. This day they're talking to God. They're blaming God again. Verse 11. When I wept and fasted, I was reviled for it. Midrash. When I wept and fasted, I was reviled for it. Commentary. When David cried and went without food, his shame and his brothers and enemies assailed him with scornful and abusive language. Verse 13. I made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword amongst them. Verse 13. No commentary. Verse 13. Those who sit in the gate talk about me. I am the taunt of drunkards. <laughs> Verse 14. Well, in Isaiah 53, I'm shunned, despised, and held no account, considered afflicted by God, smitten, and plagued. And I'm feeling every bit of it. This, this, this could be, have been written for me. In many ways, it was. To show that. It's what happens when you, you, you know, God's having me do all this. Here's the proof. I couldn't have this knowledge. Your rabbis don't have this knowledge. And um, the book was finished well over five, five, uh, five years ago. And videos have been going out on these 50 chapters, although they, they did come into a severe state of disrepair by reposting them so much. But uh, we're redoing, making them fresh. And uh, lost my train of thought. Continue. Yes, Lord. <laughs> that was the Lord's name, continue. Uh, as for me, May my prayer come to you, O Lord, at a favorable moment, O God, in your abundant faithfulness. Answer me with your, with your sure deliverance. He made me live. Verse 15. Rescue me from the mire. Let me not sink. Let me be rescued from my enemies and from the watery depths. And David's quite a poet. Let the floodwaters not sweep me away. Commentary. Oh, and let the deep not swallow me. David is a lowly shepherd who was born in sin and is admittedly a sinner. God has anointed David to be king of all Israel, according to Samuel. And David feels as though he is living in a pit of shame and despair. Verse 17. Answer me, O Lord, according to your great steadfastness, in accordance with your abundant mercy. <laughs> Turn to me. I'm in the fire of refinement. I don't get a lot of mercy. I've asked for it many times. Verse 18, do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Answer me quickly. That's talking to God, friend to friend. Verse 19, come near to me and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. No commentary. Verse 20, you know my reproach, my shame, my disgrace. You are aware. Oh, there we go. I don't know, Mom. You don't worry about it. Here. Uh. Careful. Thank you so much, Miss. What's for lunch? Uh, a slice of chicken a rotisserie sandwich. Sounds good. That's my sister. I had to pick something up in the store for me. Sorry about that. I'm almost done. I'm afraid my cameras are going to shut down. You know my reproach, my shame, my disgrace. You are aware of all my foes. You are aware of all my foes. 
God has absolute knowledge of all things and all people. He chooses to follow closely. Has absolute knowledge. That would include all naysayers and haters and enemies of his anointed one, David, and his righteous servant, Moshe, myself. You're saying some really bad things out there. You better really think about what if God really is within him. And the angel of his presence. Isn't this what the Jewish people pray for that are observing? Don't they say this is going to happen? Moshiach comes. Well, you know what they didn't know? When I'm here, the rabbis are dismissed before God. That's in the Hebrew Bible. And he appoints me as the only teacher that he recognizes. And what I teach, I'm doing right now in this video. I teach this book. And if any rabbi wants to come out of dismissal, be in right standing with God, go to the scroll of remembrance and see the unique Jewish heaven for the day of the Lord, they're going to have to preach this book too. They're going to have to go to their followers and tell them all the things they discovered they got wrong. And the reason why everything in this book is backed up by Scripture. You want to know how to read 53? Go to Ezekiel. Go to Jonah. Go to Job. You won't find the, uh, the words for refinement, but it's made real clear. It's actually defined. And what it's for and what all those words are in 53. The six big ones. Punished, wounded, chastised, maltreated, crushed, bruised. Punishment. I think of That's six. Verse 21, reproach breaks my heart. I am in despair. I hope for consolation, but there is none for comforters, but find none, but find none. No one believes David is the anointing of God to be king of Israel. Can't find anybody to believe him. Well, neither can I, baby. But I'm, a, I'm on his ancestral tree. I'm the twig of the shoot of the stump of Jesse. Jesse being the father of King David. 21, we're approached. Oh, they give me gall for food, vinegar to quench my thirst. No comment. Commentary. 23. And here's where David gets to. <laughs> but you can tell he wants a little vengeance. 23. May their table be a trap for them, a snare for their allies. May their table be a trap for them, a snare for their allies. Commentary. May the haters and naysayers and enemies and those who shun David and shame him and all those who believe in their talk and words and opinions about David, which is the table they have set for themselves against God's anointed one, be their undoing before God. And when David is king, and that would be true for me too. There is no king of Israel coming with Moshe. I'm a teacher. That's just one more man, made up man's word that came from Rambam that the rabbis teach today. No kingdom. God knew it was going to be a democratic country when they finally came back. And you can bet he knew about the year that was going to be, if not the month two. In the beginning. Absolute knowledge, people. He's truly, it really more, you know, once you really see what he can do, and spend a lot of time with him, and I've been with him 16 years. <laughs> I, I, I get bitter about it. I'm like a Zeke. I get furious and bitter sometimes because I'm still in the fire, and it's extraordinarily painful, emotionally and physically. And the maltreatment is constant. I mean, okay, we're not going to get into any of the stories right now. I'll tell them in Israel. 
If I can ever get anybody to believe. They may be out there. I've got some followers who are apparently sharing a video. Because only 15, when you post, only 15 stamps is what they call them go out. And that's where you see it on YouTube. You know, a little picture with the title and this and that. And you decide if you want to check it out. Only 15. But yesterday, I got 44 people in one hour. That's about more than 15. And when it was said and done, 363 on that video in one day. So uh, that's interesting. And it's more than one big group. There's about three groups that look to be sharing. Verse 24, may their eyes grow dim so that they cannot see. May their loins collapse continually. Not quite sure what that means. I bet the Holy Spirit does. <laughs> Angel of God's presence. Yes, they fill this room. And if we, let me finish this before you get off on that. Pour out your wrath on them, God. Your blazing anger overtake them. He has passed his wrath to them. In Isaiah 51, his bowl of reading, his cup of wrath from the Jewish people to those who told him to get down on the ground and walk all over them. That would be the people who took their book and said they don't know how to read it and attached it to their New Testament, Christianity, and Gentiles in general who treated them bad. And then my description starts in Isaiah 52, coincidentally enough. Completed in 53. Guess who's going to bring that wrath through me? God is through me. You should read <laughs> or check out all the videos that got Jesus in it. God flat out says he's a myth. And I can verify that. I mean, I'm, there's no question I'm with the God of Israel. And his name's not Allah. And his name's not Jesus. It's God. By the way, Jewish people, he doesn't mind if you call him God. You don't have to say his name, her or him. He doesn't mind. He's here. He's in a, well, he's not in a good mood with me. I mean, not always in this fire refinement. But uh, he's coming with a covenant of friendship and sin forgiveness, for crying out loud. It's all good. Tears. What you wanted. It's what you thought was going to happen. You can tell your Christian friends, look, this man can explain 53 and why it's not... Jesus, you know why? Because it's him. And that's how why it's written the way it is. So I can think the only person who could ever figure 53 out is not Jews for Judaism. It's not Toby the Singer. It's not Shabbat.org. It's not Art Scroll. Nobody can figure it out and explain it properly except me, the righteous servant. And it's in three, in full, it's in three places in this book. And they're all on video now. Yeah, we've gotten to all of them. There's another one in the life of God's righteous servant at the end. Verse 26, may their encampments be desolate. May their tents stand empty. Take us on a rope. Verse 27. Remember, he was a savage warrior. <laughs> he killed a lot of people. And women, too. That's in another video on another song. For they persecute those you have struck. They talk about the pain of those you have felt. He's talking to God. This is kind of complicated. For they persecute those you have struck. Commentary. They, the haters and naysayers and enemies and those who shun David and shame him and all those who believe in their talking words and opinions about David persecute him for being the anointed of God. Most, if not all, do not believe God spoke to Samuel in his anointment of David. David feels as though God's anointment of him has been a physical blow to his life and feelings. Those, he has that in quotes, would include others that had been anointed or selected by God as his prophet, whose works are rarely believed and, 
whose words are rarely believed, the prophets, and heeded as the words of God and go through the same ordeal as David. Well, I'm experiencing it, and I know Ezekiel did. He was shunned the spies, and they laughed at him, according to Rashi. Interpretation of a Hebrew word, I don't know. They talk about the pain of those you have felt. Those, again in quotes, commentary, would be men who failed or died in their in the name of the Lord. There have been many. 28. Add to that to their guilt. Let them have no share of your benevolence. Benefence. <laughs> so, 29. May they be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteousness. Be erased from the book of life and not be inscribed with the righteousness. Commentary, a heavenly book in which the names of the righteous are inscribed. The erasure of a sinner's name from such a register is equivalent to death. Today we know that to mean you're not going to heaven. <laughs> God doesn't come down and kill anybody. According to the Talmud, it is open on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah itself is also known as the Day of Judgment, on which God opens the books of life and death, which are then sealed on Yom Kippur. The two days of Rosh Hashanah usher in the ten days of repentance, also known as the Days of All, which culminate in the major fast day of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Yeah, I've been to all the high home days. I was in a conversion class at a conservative synagogue here in Houston uh, until my dad had a heart attack, and I, I, we stopped going. I could have gone back, but God said, no, we'll convert in Jerusalem if we convert. And that's been discussed in the, the reasons and everything else. The scroll of remembrance in Malachi 3, verse 16, is not the book of life. But you have to be in it to go to heaven. So if you're not in it, again, I just said, this, these references to death means you're not going to heaven. In this vein, this is, um, God, oh, 316. No. Well, this is from Malachi 3. In this vein, have those who revere the Lord been talking to one another? The Lord has heard and noted it, and scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revere the Lord and esteem his name. And on the day that I am preparing, that's the day of the Lord, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possession. I will be tender toward them as a man is tender toward the son who ministers to him. And you shall come to see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between him who has served the Lord and him who has not served him. For lo, that day is at hand. Burning. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. What? Sandwich for one. I should be on the last period. Huh? Oh no, don't tell me we're going to go to a part two. Burning like an oak. The scroll of remembrance is about a special place in the heart of God for those who revere the Lord and esteem his name on, in this day of the Lord that he is preparing. It's here. Not a specific day. It began in 1948 when Israel was created, the state of, and it's considered the country today, because they returned. All along, it's just been when y'all come back, I'm going to come back. I'm going to live amongst you as I lived amongst the tents of the 